Well, you always know when a Doctor Who's good if it's making you want to talk more about Doctor Who and go and rewatch things and stuff. So um, I already have thought up two um, Doctor Who rants just from season nine. I keep getting worried. Is that right? Uh, it, yes, season nine with the starter, which is the the Magician's Apprentice and the Witch's Familiar. It will have. We're going to have at least two extras um, Doctor Who rants from it. Um, so, first one being The Brain of Morpheus. Um, this, the reason for these are because it's things that link in or tie in or canon, pardon me, with the story, with the, this story. And The Brain of Morpheus links in because it's set on Khan. Now, why is this important? Why am I talking about this? If you, with watching The Magician's Apprentice episode of Doctor Who, he goes to Khan and is talks to the um, sisterhood there. And they sort of go, what have you done? And there's also a prequel, uh, which you can find on like Doctor Who Extra, which you can find on the Doctor Who website and stuff, which is just the, him, the conversation he has with this sisterhood of um, nuns and stuff. They also appear in um, one of the shorts for the um, War Doctor storyline, where you see him becoming... Well, you see Paul McGann regenerate into that Doctor, which is so nice. It was just a nice little thing. Let Paul McGann get his regen. I mean, I think it's one of those things a lot of Doctors kind of like is getting a regen. I know Tom Colin Baker's a bit, you know, didn't really get his and it was a bit unfair, but never mind. Um, anyway, so yeah, they've turned up twice in modern history and there is a reason for them. Sorry, I've got a really tired arm today, so... Oh, that's better lean it on myself. Um, so that's what we're talking about today, is the planet Khan and the Sisterhood, and who they are and why they are Doctor Who canon. Um, and the answer to that is this. Brain of Morpheus. Brain of Morpheus is the um, is, a, is a Tom Baker um, storyline. It is four episodes and is not only got a lot of Time Lord lit history in it, but yeah, it also brings in the Sisterhood. So, um, I'm trying to remember if they've got... Yeah, the Eternal Sisterhood. That's what it is. The Eternal Sisterhood. That's their name. Um, who are they? What are they? Let's get into that all. Um, let's talk about the story and you'll find out about it from there. So, the, do the, the, the story of Brain of Morpheus literally starts with the TARDIS landing on the planet Khan. The Doctor walk and the Doctor coming out and throwing a hissy fit, quite literally. Um, this is at the point where the Doctor's been... He's with um, Sarah Jane, is his assistant, and it's very much... Um, he's very much allowed to do his own thing, but the Time Lords will manipulate him and shove him about and get him to do their dirty work. He's not the wet ops man yet, but that's what he's leading in to be. Um, and he... So he literally, he knows that he's been manipulated onto this planet and he doesn't know why. And he's fuming. So he comes out and he's just like, that's it. No, I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to sit here and play with my yo-yo and you can all sod off. I don't care. I don't want to know. I am tired of being manipulated. Piss off, sort of thing. And it's, yeah, it's quite a good little bit, is that. But Sarah Jane's not going to stand for that and goes off exploring and ends up dragging him into it anyway because, well, what else are you going to do? Um, and they are found by... Um, I want to call him Servoin. What's what's his real name? Let's have a look. Blah, 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 blah. Solon. That's his name. Solon, who is a future, 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 future Earth scientist, um, who's living on Khan, and he he gives the explanation that he is there to um, just for peace, so that he can ex do his experiments and get on with his work without being disturbed, and. Um, Poisons them. 
uh, what he's actually up to is he has the brain of Morpheus. Are you watching cats jump over the fence? Um, he has the brain of Morpheus in a um, in a jar downstairs, and it tells the story of Morpheus. Morpheus is a time lord who went renegade and wanted and basically was going to take over the universe as as time lords are won't and one of the ways he was going to do this was by stealing the was by taking the elixir of life from the sisterhood mm -hmm. so going into that the sister the eternal sisterhood look after the flame of life and the um and which which gives the elixir of life um, this is used. They, you know, they are therefore immortal. They partake of the elixir of life, and they have lived forever, for a long, 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 long time. Um, and are friends, allies with the time lords, um, and that they will give the elixir to the time lords for when there's like a dodgy regeneration or something. It's it's good stuff basically, and they have a working relationship. I think that's a sensible way of putting it, a working relationship together. They, however, don't... Um, but, however, in this storyline, the flame that creates the elixir is dying. It's going out. And they think the Doctor has been sent to um, nick what's left of the elixir, because they only have a small amount left. Um, the flame isn't enough to create any elixir. So, when actually, of course, he helps them and sorts it out. So, you've sort of got these two plots going in it. First, in, in this storyline, firstly, you've got the um, you've got Solon and Morpheus. And Morpheus is literally a brain in a jar that's talking, and they're trying to build a new body for him um, so that he can rule the world. And they want the Doctor's head to finish it off, which is why they're trying to get rid, which is why he poisons them. Um, and then you've got the sisterhood who is, you know, and then you've got the sisterhood who think that the doctor is there to try and steal the elixir of life and is therefore out to burn him at the stake. Uh, <laughs> other characters in this one, you've got the sisterhood and they, you've kind of got the old mother superior and the number one in charge and then it's just a bunch of girls all from there. They're all quite they're they're all really cheesy. It's really quite funny. But the 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 woman who does the mother, um, the the old the, the mother Teresa, is really good. She does do a very good job at her role. The number two, her right hand woman, is a bit much. She keeps pulling, you know, a typical Doctor Who that she's got to pull this pose every, you know, we, you know. The flame is blah, 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 and it's ridiculous, and she's got big, wide eyes, and you can see she's really forcing to have these big, mad, staring eyes, and it looks ridiculous, but hey, that's Doctor Who for you. Um, and then you've got on Solon's camp, you've got Solon, he's got a great big sort of ogre, I'm sort of seeing if there's a name for him on the back of the box, no, but either way, he's got... He's got a, a, a big, dumb, lumbering off of an assistant, typical Igor-style thing. And um, then you've got Morpheus himself, um, who is, yeah, this sort of big, evil, conniving Time Lord. ma ha, ha I am more intelligent. I am a Time Lord of the First Order, sort of thing. Um, yeah, and he spends a lot of time as a brain in a jar. <laughs> Um, that he gets this big monstrous body at the end. Um, uh, the original storyline of it is that the body's being rebuilt by a robot that has no idea about making, like, you know, who has an idea of form, but no idea of, like, aesthetics, of, like, making it look good. So um, it's all stitched together, whereas they, they sort of changed that idea for the what actually happened and went with the idea that this body had been specially built for, to be stupendously powerful and, you know, the best lungs and the best body and blah, blah, blah. But it's, you know, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It's there. It's not about um, looks. It's about purpose. Um, and the purpose is taking over the world. So that's a rough idea of what the story is about. It's one of these ones that it's worth watching. It is worth watching for um, 
several reasons. One, it's a really good Doctor Who. It's a good Tom Baker, um, Sarah Jane plot. So, yeah, good to watch like that. You can just jump in. It's fine. There's no weird backstory. It's just a random adventure. But it's now canon to this world. Um, so it's interesting for that. So, yeah, you can just jump in and watch it. It's got stuff that's now canon in the in the new stuff in it. And also, they, they do a really interesting thing at one point in it, which is um, typical Doctor Who retconning its own plot at multiple points. There is a point where they basically start playing, I think they call it a mind-bending contest, but it's... Um, um, and it's Morpheus versus the Doctor in this machine, and they're basically like arm wrestling, like brain wrestling almost. That they're both sort of saying there, and they're doing psychic thinking, and it's it's this sort of um, yeah mental battle. And they have this imagery of it on the screen, and the idea behind it is that yeah they're sort of pushing each other, and you'll watch it. Why the Doctor gets into it is in the thing, but what happens on the screen is there is a point where the Doctor is losing. And it starts going through his regenerations. And you see, you know, um, Tom Baker and then John Pertwee and then Patrick Troughton and then William Hartnell and then some other guy and then some other guy and then some other guy and then some other guy. You know, and the random members of the crew and some historical photos and all sorts of random shit that it's ticking through. And the idea with it was how old is the Doctor? They hadn't set up at this point in the Doctor Who canon this 13 lives of the Doctor of, of, of a Time Lord nonsense. It was just, you could regenerate. So he's, you know, and it goes back. So nowadays the idea is, is that, is that the Doctor bluffing or is that, you know, actually there? We don't know. Because, and this is where it gets into a really interesting Doctor Who discussion and why this starts becoming a bit more of a rant of how many lives has the Doctor had? And I mean, the Time Lord that calls himself the Doctor in his current incarnations. Because remembering that the War Doctor isn't a Doctor. Um, and there's the Valyard, which is, um, you'll have to watch one of the um, Colin Bakers to find out who the Valyard is. That might be a good one to do as a, 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 as a, a, as a rant, though. But yeah, the Doctor's had many forms. So how many of them before William Hartnell, where he stole the TARDIS and called himself the Doctor, was the Doctor? Because he, he does talk about you know, helping Rassilon and Omega, he helps Omega build the original uh, Star Engine and stuff like that. And it's really, you know, has the Doctor had more than the lives we've seen? What's he been up to before it? We can never, we'll never know. We will never ever know. But that's kind of cool. And it's one of these things which, at the end of the day, comes down to retconning and being confusing. And, you know, and it doesn't really matter. But. It's fun. It's a fun thing to sort of theorise and argue about. So. Um, that sort of the big thing that comes out of um, Brain of Morpheus is this one scene sort of ends up giving you hours and hours of Doctor Who argument, <laughs> basically, which is really fun. But Morpheus is a really cool villain. He's a really good sort of Time Lordy villain. And the Sisterhood's really cool. And they've, obviously, for the new stuff, not only are they still about and, and, and have returned, but they're also... Much more, um, they, they, they serve much bigger role because there is with, um, they help regenerate Paul McGann. They literally hand him a big bottle of potion and go, drink this. It will, I can, we concocted it for you. It will regenerate you into a warrior. So you suddenly get this idea that the, the elixir of life is more than just a heal all. It is actually something that, the Doctor, you know, the, the, the Time Lords use to gain um, 
to get help sort their regeneration if they need to be something and they want to regenerate into something specific they can actually create potions from the elixir of life to heal them up so yeah that's a really cool idea i really like that um Anyway, I think that's enough for this rant. I think I've sort of said everything I wanted to say. But yeah, that's that's a sort of rough idea of what Brain of Morbius is about. I do recommend it. Really, really good one. Um, enjoy it. I hope you... Yeah, watch it if you're, if you're intrigued about the sisterhood because it'll give you a bit of backstory for them. You don't need to, but it's just fun to talk about. Um, I'll see you probably the next Doctor Who rant will be which is familiar for the new season. So... I'll see you then. Cheerio, bye.